All right, we are back in action here with lesson 6.2. Remember, we're talking about parallelograms. Um, just as a quick review of parallelograms and the properties, we have six properties so far and one definition. So remember, the parallelogram definition tells us that it has two sets of parallel sides. The first property we learned is that the opposite sides were congruent. The second property was that opposite angles are congruent. The third property was that consecutive angles are supplementary. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Um, the fourth one, if one angle equals 90, then all of them have to equal 90. And then we did a couple practice problems, and then we went to their diagonal. So um, property number five, diagonals cut. Um, are cut into two congruent parts or they are bisected. And number six, each diagonal, when it is um, created, it cuts the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. All right, at the bottom of this page, if you will put the five um, different ways we can prove triangles congruent. All right, let's move on to example number three. We are going to use coordinate geometry with our parallelogram. So what are the coordinates of the intersection of the diagonals of parallelogram M, N, P, R with vertices? Negative 3, 0, negative 1, 3, 5, 4, and 3, 1. So since the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other, the intersection point is the midpoint of each diagonal. The big thing here, when you have lay, you are given the label of the parallelogram, since the diagonals are the non-consecutive vertices, it's almost every other letter. So the diagonal here would be M, P, and in R. So that is one way without drawing you can find the diagonal. So we need to find the midpoint of only one diagonal. And you actually get to pick which one you find the midpoint of. Um, if you pick one, this, the midpoint will actually be the same because it is the intersection. So just as a reminder of the midpoint theorem or the midpoint formula, um, the average of your x's divided by 2 and the average of your y's. All right, so I'm going to pick MP. You can pick NR if you want to do so and see if you can get the same answer. So I'm going to pick M and I'm going to pick P. So I would say X1 plus X2 divided by 2 and Y1 plus Y2 divided by 2. It doesn't matter which one is um, 1 and 2. Just make sure they are the same for both. Negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2 over 2. And 0 plus 4 is 4 over 2, reducing that down to 1, 2. Now if we would graph this parallelogram, draw the diagonals, we would see that both diagonals actually intersect at 1, 2, the midpoint. Alrighty, before you get started with your check your progress, if you will put the midpoint formula again on this page in the right hand corner, right above your check your progress. Stop this video and do your checkpoint. As we look over this, I actually did both of them, and you can see that both diagonals are actually intersecting at the same point. They have the same midpoint. All right, and last but not least, we couldn't get out of here without a proof, so 
um, we need to write a two column proof. We are given that this is a parallelogram. We are given that AC and BD are the diagonals and point P is the intersection. We need to prove that these two bisect each other. All right, and what will help us is we need to prove triangles congruent first. So remember what will get us to bisects. Bisects means cuts it in half. So we somehow need to get to AP is congruent to PC or CP and DB is congruent to PB. If we can find that, then we can prove that they bisect each other. So that's kind of how we're going to try to get to our proof statement. So we are given that it's a parallelogram and that they are that diagonals, which is given. Now we can say that, and I'm going to erase this information because we don't necessarily have it. That's what we're trying to get to. We do know that AB is congruent to DC, and we know that because opposite sides of a parallelogram, since it's a parallelogram, are congruent, or you can put theorem 6.3. Right, so we have that information. The next thing we have, because it's a parallelogram, we also know that AB is parallel to DC. Remember, um, that is the definition of a parallelogram. Now remember, a parallelogram actually gives us um, you can look at it as a transversal, so let's look at it maybe as something like this. There's our parallel lines. Let's just look at that one first. So we know alternate interior angles, angle B, D, C is congruent to angle D, B, A because of alternate interior angles, but we also know if I change that transversal line, if I go this way with it, with the other diagonal, now I know that angle BAC is congruent to angle DCA because of alternate interior angles. Oh, well now it's kind of taking shape because I have, oops, let's get back to here. I have an angle, I have a side and an angle. I can prove triangle let's move this down just a tad. Triangle A B P is congruent to triangle C D P because of A S A. And I prove those triangles congruent because don't we know that if our triangles are congruent, then our favorite corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I know that AP is congruent to CP. We just talked about AP is congruent to CP because of CP, CTC in this triangle. Highlight that one more time. We proved that these two triangles were congruent, so because AP is corresponding to CP, I know that's congruent. I also know that DP is congruent to BP. DP is congruent to BP because of CP, CTC, so I know that they bisect each other because the definition of a segment bisector. Alrighty, um, we are finished with this lesson. And at the bottom of this page, if you would put your favorite color, let's do that. Um, I hope you enjoyed your lesson. If you have any questions or need to go back over anything, remember there is part one and part two. Have a great day.